having seen seen his work before I I knew how much he um, he can help the director in in the question of style and the look of the picture. Uh, so uh, I fought to have Gil on, on my first English movie. Of course, uh, I could not be but uh, anything else but supportive. Uh, however, um, I remember that he was support, supporting me in my problems of hanging behind the schedule and going over budget, uh, much more that I was supporting him. I think the budget was something silly, like 88,000, which is the price of a sort of documentary for that type of stuff they did, which they only made dirty pictures, really, those two. And there were seven rooms in all, and um, literally they were not lit as a normal, normal set would be. They were, everything was cheated, but everything was exciting and looked. Um, it was a big mystery attached to it. I remember each morning coming on the set, which was ra rather uh, uh, dreary uh, and uh, looking much more dreary in the uh, working light of the um, of the studio and then uh, when Gil came into it uh, it immediately uh, became exciting you know every uh, bit of light he put on it was coming from the right direction and having the right intensity I remember being o always uh, enchanted by those uh, few moments when he, the, the first lighting started. Towards the end of that, we, when the girl went, mind went, when we did, we, we weren't sure what to do, but then Polanski said, leave the furniture where it is and we extend the walls out 16 feet, just like that, which is what we did. And we made it look that much Bigger. It was that like a cardboard box being opened up. That was my idea that I worked out with the um, production designer, you know, to have the room uh, getting bigger and bigger in, uh, in her mind, of course, and uh, that was important to render this uh, uh, solitude of a girl in, left in this apartment, but we also used wider and wider angles. On repulsion, he found a special lens. He found a 50 millimeter lens that looked really beautiful for handheld. And I, 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 I understood from that that a 50 millimeter lens, you can get different 50 millimeter lenses. That all the focal length is 50 millimeters, but they actually give different pictures. And some give nicer pictures than others, but the focal length is 50 millimeters. So he had an eye he had a wonderful eye that he could choose and understand what a lens was doing. This massive hand thing that was coming through the walls, through this, we, we spent hours getting the right stuff to make, make push through. It, was, it took us hours to do this, and hours of doing it, and Varansky and all of us, we were on the floor, crawling about on our knees with Aeroflex cameras photographing this shit going on. It was difficult for, difficult for him to light and difficult for the, the production designer to, to, to achieve and difficult for me to have the effect that I really wanted. Today it would be wonderful with the digital possibilities, you know, of, of, pro, of post-production. Uh, I wish I were doing this film today. Now when I look at it, it seems to me so amateurish, you know. But it did come off, it came off to everywhere. Well, it was a small studio, but very pleasant, very charming. And uh, I had a good crew, there was a very good atmosphere on the set. And that's, that's what makes it all fun, you see, that's what makes you enjoy it. And you get a man like Polanski, and he's, he loves what he sees, and uh, he appreciates it. You get this big appreciation from him, like you do from Hitchcock too. He is the most outstanding black and white photographer you will ever find. I mean, he's one of the few, there's a couple of them, but black and white is very difficult because you have to make depth with black and white. You have, because you don't have colour, you have to make depth with black and white. And if you watch his films, 
see how he makes the shadows into depth to tell the story. And he's uh, it, just the best. If anybody wanted to study black and white, they should study his films. Yeah, he was really a, a terrific guy and with a great sense of humor. Uh, and um, a very, uh, very funny, you know, with his, with his ear always. Because he lost hearing on one ear when he was uh, the pilot. Well, Gilbert Taylor, the photographer, was just a very funny man. Uh, and, of course, working on The Omen, which was not a comedy, was very good. I don't mean that he, we sent it up, but he, he was just sort of... He was a very gentle, to me anyway, and I'd worked with him before. And so, meet, uh, on a, a so-called comedy, which I, I went, it was meant to be a comedy, a lighter piece, and uh, he was just, he had a wicked sense of humour. Lucas was always having a beef with, with, with Gil about the light. <laughs> and he was, and uh, Lucas said, I must have more light, I must have more light. And Gil was like, you got no fucking light! <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was Gil. You know, and, uh, but as I said, they, uh, I, don't, I don't think Gil and George hit it off all that well. Gil was used to a system and working with some directors like Hitchcock that that uh, didn't care what the cameraman did. Uh, he had storyboards and he just said, "Do um, this is the scene I want, uh, light it any way you like. And um, um, and that was somewhat the system that Gil was used to. Now it was my job in the middle to come between these two who weren't talking very much. And uh, it was quite... Um, Difficult at times because I'd line up a shot with George and uh, Gil may not have been on the set even. Lucas on Star Wars was the new kid on, theoretically the new kid on the block and Gilbert transformed the ideas of, of the ideas, right? It was an idea for Star Wars. But Gilbert transformed the ideas into a major motion picture because of his experience, because of, you know, working understanding the actors. He worked very closely with the actors.